And there you go. Um, I forgot to record the meeting. So we will record this meeting. And uh, as always, we will post it on our um, blog. Um, Darren, who's uh, Derek, I think who's on the call is really gracious to help us and in, in, in getting that onto the call. So um, we will record this meeting for your information. And seeing no further questions, I'll go ahead and give you the update. I'll start with the uh, update from Deed. Um, I'm not sure if Mark, Deputy Commissioner Mark Majors is on the call, but I will just go ahead and do that update since we didn't plan on, on, on him giving the update. And Darielle and, and Devin, if I miss anything, please let me know. So we'll start with the, of course, the, the biggest news that has happened since we last had the call, Commissioner Grove transition from, from need and, and it will be starting maybe this month, start to be in. So we were happy for him. We'll also have um, um, some of the uh, work that was doing will continue uh, despite his, his departure. We have our amazing uh, Kevin McCannon, Deputy Commissioner for Economic Development, and become our, become our transition, uh, our temporary or interim uh, commissioner. I always forget the, the, which one is the word. So we, we uh, he is continuing the work we did under the leadership of, of um, uh, Kevin, uh, Deputy Commissioner Kevin or, or interim commissioner. So that's one of the um, updates we have. And then from the workforce uh, uh, development side of the that a lot of you deal with, you have seen that uh, Lori has transitioned from her uh, career force uh, role. Um, and I think today or tomorrow is our last day. And so Mike Lang, whom you have worked with, will be um, um, stepping up into that role. And um, the other, uh, Turn, employee turnover we had was um, our governor's work, workforce board uh, chair, uh, workforce board um, manager, is it what Ben was doing? Yes. So, and he's also transitioned from the, from the um, role and we have another uh, amazing person who's uh, stepped up to get to that role. And um, if any one of you want to reach out to any of the leaders that, that are uh, new to the department, please feel free to reach out to me and I will make sure I connect you with them. So that's the first deed is concerned about the Office of New Americans. Um, since we last talked, we had gone through a competitive process for this position. I remember last time we advertised, um, I, I did share with this team that we had the position for assistant commissioner posted and um, we went through the process and, and, uh, and you may have seen the, um, uh, the announcement that uh, I will be having the honor to continue to serve you on this role. And um, that gives us the next uh, big agenda on the item, which is now establishing the office. Um, we had first to make sure that we, we have someone who will be staying on a permanent basis, then we can work on making sure that the office is established and we have a budget for it and then create more stuff and expand the office. So that, that has happened. And then um, I had also the honor of attending the National Governance Association uh, the seminar uh, the, that brought together um, workforce boards and local workforce uh, uh, you know, committees into in DC. Uh, I had uh, the honor of representing you all and, and making sure that we highlight the need uh, to integrate uh, African new Americans uh, into the workforce. So a lot of the states do share that sentiment with us. And, and I was happy to see that uh, very good discussions continue on all over the country in terms of having um, the communities integrated into the into our economies. And that's not still driven by the labor shortage we have, but also, you know, entrepreneurship was part of it. And generally, you know, our economies cannot develop um, to its full potential without including our um, immigrant and refugee communities into, into the play. So uh, that was something uh, positive that I've seen that and the discussions are really going great. Uh, among all the 50 states. Then uh, there was um, a language access fund that we had um, applied for uh, in this office uh, to, to expand our language access policy with Indeed and then to also uh, inform for the rest of the um, agencies to have that uh, policy or something that we can at least take the leadership. That is not the same as the Office for Enterprise Translation that, that we had uh, within the proposal uh, for the Department of Administration, 
but this is some sort of uh, you know starting with the deed um, you know to make sure that all our documents are have the necessary uh, translation and interpretation that that is needed and the policy would really help us determine you know questions like which languages do we need to interpret or translate which documents do we need which are uh, which services do we need to uh, make sure that uh, they are translated so this is something that's in the pipeline and that the office will be focusing on um, that help lets me transition to the next thing that i wanted to update with you what will the office be uh, doing in the future language access is going to be a huge part of it and we have uh, some of the ask and, and Darielle may, may be able to go into that when when you're doing the office update but um, we do have some money that we're asking for language access um, but again i always say that this office's job is mostly to focus on um, removing those barriers uh, that that are making for communities to integrate into either the workforce or the uh, you know entrepreneurship and we do see again and again that language access is just a big issue uh, closely followed by you know some of the credentialing work that we have talked about uh, and then um, some of the legal services that is also uh, something I can touch on and once we do our updates. But um, I think that is where I will stop and I will come back to you again for more updates, but I would um, like to uh, see if there's any questions about those updates before I can hand it over to uh, Darial and Nima and Devin who are our amazing policy team. Please feel free to raise your hand or just type your question if there's any updates indeed updates or any questions on deed updates or Office of New American updates, please, uh, this is the time to ask that question. Okay, seeing none, I will just hand it over to uh, uh, Nima and Darial and Devin. Please take it from here. Thank you. Lisa. Thank you. I will oh, go ahead, Nima. Hi. So I will hand it over to Daryl to start us off, and then we will have Devin close us off and give us an update, and then we will be open to questions after. Thank you very much, Devin. I mean, Daryl, go ahead. That's great. Thanks, Nima. Hi, folks. Um, thanks for having me. This is such a great group, and um, thank you. Now, official Assistant Commissioner Mohammed. Um, appreciate getting to continue to work with you in this role. So. I am very pleased as I'm sure everyone else on the call is as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say a couple of things at the top. I know Devin has put together um, some good slides that we're gonna walk through and then we can have a little bit more update discussion as well about kind of where things stand right now. We're having this at a very opportune time because um, I guess in my language, because I work in government relations, I would say we have our bills um, parked in, in good secure locations right now. So. We're meeting at a great time to get an update for you to talk about um, the Office of New Americans and how that is faring. And I'm just gonna back up for a quick second before Devin gets started and talk a little bit more about why this is important. And I do feel a little bit like I'm um, preaching to the choir here because I think everyone on this call is aware of why this is really important. But I just wanna reiterate that this office is, is different than other offices that we have. And I know there's been a little confusion at the legislature from time to time about the um, some offices, some of the ethnic councils that are really important to support different communities in our state. But this office is intended to be distinct from that. And the real distinction is, is the office is intended to focus. And the reason it's housed indeed is it's intended to focus on working with immigrants and refugee populations and helping to help them connect with employment opportunities, skill building, job training, and then employment opportunities, getting and retaining that employment. So it's really that connection there, that really nuanced and narrow focus that this office is pretty unique on. And that's different from, uh, and we really, we so appreciate the work of our ethnic councils and it is definitely our intention to continue to collaborate. In fact, you'll see in um, some of the bill language, around the Office of New Americans as it is in the language that we will continue to very intentionally collaborate with those ethnic councils. But this is intended to be um, unique and distinct because it builds on those councils work and really focuses on that employment connection. So just like Assistant um, Commissioner Mohammed said, this is a really important time, especially with the workforce crisis. 
um, the workforce shortage, that we're really making those intentional deliberate connections. And of course, it's part of how we're going to make sure that the economy works for everyone, making sure that folks who are more new arrivals to the state have really good and healthy connections to those good jobs. So that's what the office is like. I can, that's sort of my summary of what the office is intended to do here and how it's distinct. Um, and again, we're really excited about it. We've also seen that the legislature a lot of excitement about it as well. So with that, I am gonna let Devin go ahead and jump in and walk us through some slides, just walking you through kind of where this office is and some related items. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about where things stand at this moment. And I think we'll, we're gonna have a little conversation. I don't wanna jump thing, jump ahead, but a little conversation about how you can continue to be involved as well. So with that, I'm gonna hand things over to Devin. Perfect, thank you so much. I'm going to share some slides here. They showing up for everybody? Got it. Well, thank you. I'm Devin Bowdry, legislative liaison here at DEED. Gonna walk you through uh, some of the items that are in the governor's recommendation for DEED. This is not everything that we have. That would take a very long time. Um, but if you want to know more, you always feel free to reach out and we can discuss more about what's in DEED's budget. Uh, so to kick things off is um, our biggest item. It's paid family and medical leave. Um, this will provide a, sort of a wage replacement. Um, if you are taking care of a, a newborn or an adopted child or a sick family member, it's probably the highest profile item for a deed that you are maybe hearing about. And it's uh, kind of traveling separately. It's gone through several different committees, um, maybe over a dozen, I'm not sure at this point, um, but it's a, a very big piece and a very big program here. Second one is uh, Main Street Economic Revitalization. Um, this one came out in 2021, we had 80 million. This one's really focused on uh, development and um, rebuilding and redeveloping economic corridors. So think Main Street or strip malls, um, things like that. And this year we're pushing for 85 million. Um, you know, the, the last time we had this uh, program funded was the first time we had had it funded. And um, we had some, some things to work out with some things that we've heard to make the program better. So we're also looking to do that as well. Next is the Expanding Opportunity Fund. Uh, this would put more loan capital out there and also kind of pair alongside uh, a lot of federal funding that we're getting for, for small business loans. Um, and, and in particular, we're hoping that um, a lot of this funding would go to uh, BIPOC communities as well. Next is uh, the Small Business Partnership Program. Um, so along with having capital, having technical assistance, uh, and all of that understanding as well is also very important. We hear, we've heard, I mean, especially throughout the pandemic, um, I know there were a lot of challenges accessing um, relief programs, whether they're at the state level or the federal level, um, just because the technical assistance was not there. So we always hear that technical assistance is uh, critically important and those needs vary. Um, what, what's needed varies by community, so we're hoping um, that this money will go to fund uh, additional technical assistance across the state. Uh, next is the small business navigation program, kind of similar to technical assistance, but having actual people on the ground, um, this would fund uh, people to actually kind of be that point person uh, across the state. And I think this would fund, I wanna say nine navigators, I might be wrong about that, um, to work across the state be that point of contact for uh, business development needs. And Launch Minnesota, this is a program that we've had for the last few years here. Um, this really focuses on uh, the, the innovative startup economy and a lot of this money, again, focused on um, the BIPOC uh, entrepreneurs, BIPOC startups. Um, so pushing for another 5 million in this program. And adult use cannabis is also a part of uh, a much bigger package that is uh, traveling on its own throughout the legislature, which has been to almost 20 committee stops, I want to say. Um, but do you have a small portion of this program or of the, the legalization program focused on uh, one, workforce development, two, economic development on the business side, and then third is the um, technical assistance piece again. 
So this uh, legalization uh, for adult use cannabis would come with, you know, a big regulatory component, and then the technical assist would be used to navigate that. And then on to the workforce side, which Dariel kind of just mentioned, um, big push on, on workforce development from DEED this year, because we hear from everybody that there is a workforce shortage and that it's critically important. Um, so the first one here is Drive for Five. This would be uh, 30 million for um, these five industries that you see here in particular, um, technology, caring professions, education, manufacturing, and trades. Um, other, and these would um, focus primarily on, on sustaining high, high paying uh, wages, high paying jobs with um, strong demand, which is what we try to do for all of our workforce development programs, but we're looking at these five industries in particular. Next is target po targeted population workforce programs pushing for 80 million in this program. So this would be a mix of uh, three things. It'd be workforce development, it would be capacity building for nonprofits, and also uh, the DEI training. So I'm sure this group is, is plenty familiar with uh, the statistic where BIPOC communities unemployment rate is always, you know, double, if not triple that of the statewide average. Um, so there, we're, we're seeing that there's a, a gap here and that we're questioning why our employer is not able to hire from these communities. So hopefully we're able to bridge that gap with this funding here. Next is youth workforce development, pushed over 20 million over the biennium. Um, this would be spread across three different programs, our Youth at Work program, um, Minnesota Youth Program, and Youth Build, which are all three programs that we've had at DEED for some time, and all three do good work. And last but certainly not least, uh, Office of New Americans, uh, one and a half million for the office, um, which you've just heard about. And so far, we're seeing this language uh, in the governor's proposal, of course and also in the Senate language and in the House language, um, which is, you know, we don't want to celebrate too early, but that's a good uh, situation to be in, seeing it in all three packages. So with that, happy to stop it there and take any questions that anybody may have. Well, and I might just do a couple updates. Oh, and I see we I think we do have a question and then I might just do a couple updates. Um, oh, here we go. Well, let's take this, the question in the chat next and then why don't we just do a quick, you and I'd have an update of kind of where things sit right now. Um, that was a great walkthrough. Thank you for doing that. Um, so as I was alluding to on Friday, uh, the House and Senate, so last week they came out with their omnibus bills, meaning they're there are big packages. So how this always works is the governor has to release the governor's recommendations for budget bills first. And that happens in January. That's set out in our state laws. And then the House and Senate come in later. Um, and typically they allow for a couple of months for ideas to flow and for some of the governor's ideas to get some discussion as well. And then they come out with something later. Uh, they also tend to come out with those agreements after there's a big agreement on how much gets to be spent in kind of every area. And so that agreement happened and the House and Senate released their omnibus bills. And as Devin said, we were very, very pleased to see that both the House and Senate bills um, have the Office of New Americans item in it, as well as actually really the other items that Devin walked through. Primarily, almost everything, they're not all at the same funding levels, but really the items that Devin's walked through here are, are found in the House and Senate bills. Some of those pieces are a little different. They're, um, they're versions of uh, the Main Street Revitalization Fund are quite different, but um, you know, I think the same general spirit is in the House and Senate. They want to, want to have dollars to, to help continue rebuilding, especially um, areas that were had um, challenges following the civil unrest. That's really where the funding originated from. So we had those um, bills had a hearing on Wednesday and then on Friday. Um, and then, then those bills were passed out of their committees and sent to the Ways and Means and Finance Committee. And um, that's the really significant next step. That committee's in charge of all the money for the state. Um, sort of, in the legislature it is. And then we're expecting, so they're going on a break, a legislative break 
for Easter and Passover starting uh, tomorrow, starting tonight, I think, actually. Um, and then they won't be back until next week. And so when they return, we expect those bills to be back up in the Ways and Means and Finance Committees. And then after that stuff, they get sent to the floor. So the floor of the House, floor of the Senate, those bills are still going to remain somewhat different. Um, and like I said, they've taken some different approaches, but we have a lot of shared, I think, goals in both spaces. And both of them have the Office of New Americans funded in the bills. And so we expect both those bills to get a hearing on the floor of the House and then separately a hearing on the floor of the Senate. I'm going to give you those bill numbers real quick. Um, so the omnibus bills are Senate file 3035. And then the House omnibus bill is House file 2233. I'm expecting because the House actually had split into two committees. There was an economic development committee and there's a workforce development committee that are separate. It's sort of unusual. And on the Senate side, it's just one committee that we kind of call the jobs committee. And so we are expecting in the ways and means, so that next committee, we are expecting that those two bills get combined together. So the number will probably change again in the, in the House. And I don't actually know which, which number they'll end up using. But just I just wanted to make sure you kind of knew how to where things were right now so you can track it. Thank you, Nima. <laughs> That's helpful. So we're, we're expecting those bills. They'll pass the floor of the House and Senate, but then they'll determine that they're not the same. They're not identical. And so after that, we will, they will appoint a conference committee. They will appoint members of the conference committee, which will be different than the members of the you know, jobs committees or the workforce development committee. And then those folks will look to strike out an agreement between the, the two bills about kind of what the final bill looks like. I'm expecting it's gonna take probably a couple more weeks before we have a conference committee appointed and they start to do that work. So it is really important Look at Neema, I'm segueing right into, it is really important, even though as we're saying that we're really excited that the Office of New Americans is included in um, sort of governor's recommendation and the House and Senate bills, as well as a number of these other big initiatives. It is really important that um, folks do reach out to their lawmakers and potentially reach out to chairs of committees and make sure that they know that it's really important the final deal includes the Office of New Americans in it and why that's important. So that continues to be important because I don't anticipate the, the session ends on May 20th um, and I assume we'll be done on time, maybe even a little early, but I would assume that that conference committee is probably not going to finish it, its work for, you know, certainly sometime in May is probably when they'll be finished. So we've got a little ways to go yet. So I'm going to pause there because that was sort of a lot. The other thing, I oh, <laughs> I say I'm going to pause and then I keep talking, but I'm just gonna add one more thing. And that is we also had, and you may have tracked this, that we had some what we call standalone bills before these omnibus bills. And I just wanna note that, which was amazing. So Senator Muhammad, huge supporter of the Office of New Americans. She authored a standalone bill that got its own hearing about this. Really good reception. Same in the house, in the house that was um, Representative Feist. She carried a standalone bill as well. And I think many of you had worked with both of them on those. That's fantastic. We're super grateful to them and they'll, I'm sure, continue to be involved. However, those bills as they are, you can think of them as being kind of folded in to the omnibus bill. So we don't have to worry about those standalone bills anymore, really. We now can just focus on those omnibus bills because those are gonna be the vehicle that, that the ultimate funding ends up in. So just, just in case folks were tracking those things and are a little confused, because this just get a little murky this time, but like Devin said, you are always welcome to reach out to anyone on our teams if you have questions. And so with that, now I'm gonna stop um, and see if there are questions um, and see if, if anyone else on the team, if I missed anything as well. No questions, but I did get a request to mention one additional program and that's our return to work one. Um, that one is uh, focused on uh, reskilling seniors and getting them uh, back into the workforce should they choose. So uh, just another another way to try and address the uh, workforce shortage here. Awesome, that's yeah, a good addition. Questions. Was it Mark Majors who asked you? So <laughs> I'm just teasing now. <laughs> I will hold my silence there. Okay, good idea. We do, I think we have, we do a lot of work before we come up with these ideas, engaging with community on what, what we should be focusing on to, to help support folks. And so 
I know, I know our team heard a lot from um, seniors who had exited the workforce to come up with that proposal, as well as, of course, a lot, a lot of these other proposals come from those community conversations as well. So, and this group helped to generate many of these ideas. Well, thank you, Devin and Dario. That was amazing. Um, now I'm just gonna see if there's any question from the community members. If you have any question, please raise your hand or just unmute yourself and go ahead ask the question. Uh, Nima and Devin, I did receive a question about um, the uh, targeted populations and, uh, and someone was asking me if that's the same as the capital uh, investment and that the one time that we did so is there like what is the difference that's what they're being asked yeah these are, are two different programs um the one from the slide show here is a workforce development program um that has workforce development capacity building and um dei training all mixed into one and then the one that you're thinking of, the targeted community capital projects program um, from a couple of years ago, that is money, um, bigger, bigger dollars directly to um, nonprofits, I believe, for more like development um, projects, which also is included, I think, in the House version of the bill. Um, I want to say it maybe 10 or 15 million dollars, somewhere around there. Um, so it's still being talked about, but was not part of our package at the governor's level. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for that a bit. I see Michelle uh, hands up. Michelle, please welcome. Thank you so much. Um, it's been so exciting to see all the bills that have made to passage so far this legislative session. And I'm hoping that if you can just briefly explain the difference between a standalone bill moving forward and having this measure within an omnibus. I think sometimes there are some concerns around what happens at end of session. So if you don't mind clarifying that just a little bit for the audience, we'd be really grateful. Sure, I can jump in and answer that. Yeah, good question. Good question. And I try to keep some of that um, jargon to a minimum, um, but we have a lot of a lot of uh, terms we use in government relations space that can be a little uh, confusing. So um, a standalone bill is a bill about just one thing. So there was an Office of New American standalone bill. So that bill entirely, it just had the legislative language to create the office and the funding to create the office. But because at the state of Minnesota, we run, I don't know, even at DEED, we have hundreds of different programs that our agency runs and we have a biennial budget process so those programs even just programs that we want to keep running at the same level we have to refund them every two years and then we just talked about all kinds of new exciting things and so we have to also fund those and so every single one of those requires authorization by the legislature to fund it and to create the program or to continue it and so we tend to, instead of hearing every single one of those as their own standalone bill, so return to work, for instance, would be its own standalone bill. And then you'd have to hear it, send it off to the committee in charge of the money and then to the floor. And then the House and Senate would have to both do it and it'd have to be identical and then have to get signed by the governor. And that would take forever. <laughs> and so what we typically do is we roll things into what we call an omnibus bill, meaning it's a bill with lots of different items. They're related. So ours tend to be jobs items. They tend to be all things that is happening at DEED, although I'm gonna preview for you that it's very likely that we will roll into the omnibus bill alongside DEED stuff. Some other related items, Department of Labor and Industries items might are probably gonna roll into our bill, but they're in the kind of general same area. And so those all roll together so that all together, they will go through the process. So get passed by the main committee, sent to the committee in charge of money, passed on the floor and then negotiated and then brought back to the House and Senate for a thumbs up, okay, final passage and signature by the governor. And it's just a lot more um, expedient uh, for that to go as a package instead of to go as every single standalone item. And that's why we typically use omnibus bills, but I know sometimes they get a really bad name 
because uh, folks feel like we're hiding things in an omnibus bill, because it is true, there's a lot typically in them. And sometimes um, every once in a while, even at the state legislature, we've passed really big ones with like lots and lots of, lots of different agencies together and that folks start to lose track and get frustrated. But I'm not expecting that to happen this year. These are gonna still be items that are related enough to each other. And um, so you'll just basically see stuff that was once a standalone bill sort of roll up into an omnibus bill and that's bill to get a little bit bigger, like a, maybe a snowball um, and, and then it'll pass that way. So that's what we're expecting here. So, um, and things that were heard as a standalone bill will be rolled into the omnibus bill. I'm going to just go, since I'm chatting, I'm seeing in the chat someone asked the question, does the Office of New Americans fall under the purview of deed or a separate government agency like others? And that's an easy one, so I'm just going to answer it and say it's going to fall under the purview of deed. Does that feel like, do folks have other questions about like the standalone or the omnibus bills or anything about the process? We don't have to, but if you, if you have questions, I am happy to answer them. The goal here is to make this less mysterious, not more. <laughs> so ask if it's become more mysterious in some way. I see Maria has her hand up. Go ahead, Maria. Hey everybody, Gia, just a real quick question um, about the, um, the uh, and a, a slide a little bit earlier here, uh, we were talking or you had presented information on the nine business development navigator rules that are in one of the bill. Does, is, does that have a focus on job development for immigrant and refugee populations specifically um, in this context? And could you just say a little bit more about like, yeah, which where is that, you know, where is that included? Like which bill is that in the house? Just maybe a little bit more context for that. Thank you. Sure, I can take that one. Um, the, the navigators are not connected so much to job development as they are to um, having people to talk about more of our economic development side, which is the, the business focus side. So that can certainly, um, go go toward new Americans who are looking to start businesses um, and maybe aren't sure where the best, you know, what's the, the initial information that you need. Um, these people would kind of it'd be, there's somewhat of an outreach focus. They'll be able to be out in the community, um, meet with people, meet with groups um, and discuss what the agency has to offer and kind of demystify our many hundreds of programs that Dariel just mentioned. And I think there was a, oh, um, what bill does it live in? I think it's, I know I've seen it in either the House or Senate. I know. Do you just know the, the House. Title? Yeah, I'm going to jump in and say it's just the House that it's in the House Economic Development Bill. Okay, so that that's what I thought. Be, yeah, yeah, and it's also possible, like, just to, you know, I'm going to say that's only appearing in the House bill. It is possible, and Devin was alluding to this, we, we are kind of funding that, and those are going to be deed staff who would be hired to do those roles and they'd work on a regional basis but we also fund our partners to do very similar work so it's altogether possible that we may choose to go with just funding our partners at a good healthy level we because it's not in the house and senate bills it's just in the house bill right now so it's possible that might be something that might not shake out in the final deal but we will definitely we i hope you're getting what's coming through is that we heard a lot of feedback about the need for more supports for folks working in that small business space, entrepreneurs, small business mm -hmm. owners, and we're looking to double down on those resources. And we've just come up with a few different ways to do that. Great. That's wonderful. news. Thanks so much to both of you. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. Any other question? I think we have uh, a lot of uh, time at hand to come back to questions and uh, and give more updates. Uh, and if any of you um, you know figures out they need some more information to share, uh, please feel free to just raise your hand or or chat us, and we will be coming back to you. At this point, I'll probably invite um, uh, our friends from DHS, um, Kelly and Gauli. Um, are, are you on the call?
Yep, we're both here. I think Gali is here as well. Perfect. Just double checking. Yes. I'm Gali, let me, okay, I'll let you start, Gali. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you for giving us the you know uh, the opportunity. Um, so my name is Gali Yang, and uh, I'm uh, I'm the community outreach and uh, engagement. Uh, supervisor for our team, and this is the, the community outreach and engagement. It is a new project that we basically just launched in January, so we are all new, and we have a new team as well. Uh, our purpose is really is to um, uh, be able to provide uh, information about the various uh, uh, services that are available for refugee immigrants, and as well as uh, individuals who enter the U.S. under other status as well, uh, and also to make sure that we have opportunities to engage the community into our process so that we, uh, the services that we provide actually meet the, their needs. And so uh, that's all I'm going to say right now. Uh, just one more item is that uh, we are also in the process of developing a um, a call center, if you will, targeting at the you know the population that we are serving. So it's the refugees, the you know immigrants, um, and we are in the process of developing that. And we are hoping that you know uh, uh, when it's time, we will also be able to reach out to you and get some feedback from you as well on how to uh, you know uh, develop that system so that it's user friendly and that uh, it includes all the information that you know the. Uh, new newcomers uh, will be able to uh, use and find that you know um, successful. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Kelly now uh, to talk about specifically about the project that she's working on. Hi, thanks, Kelly. So happy to to see you all today. I know some people I've spoken to and others I hope to connect to soon. So I'm Kelly Schmitz. I am. I think the newest member of the resettlement programs office currently, and I'm also a member of Gali's team on the newly formed community outreach engagement. And my role specifically on the team is a resettlement pathway specialist. So this is a, it's a new role and it's in response to the different ways that our people are now arriving to the US outside of the traditional refugee pathway. So some of these you might've heard of like United for Ukraine, um, humanitarian parole, and then also like welcome court. So my role is really looking to connect and provide factual information on those programs and then also ensuring that all newcomers that are arriving to Minnesota through these pathways are connected to the services that they're eligible for and really learning more about emerging needs within, within those communities. So we hope to be in touch with you all more as we build our office and we build out our outreach, but please do be in touch if you have um, things, needs that you need from us, if you want presentations, things like that. I know I'm happy to field questions on some of these pathways to the best of my ability. Some of them are, most of them are federally administered programs, but I will put my information in the chat. So if, if questions are arising around Welcome Core, things like that, we're happy to respond. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kelly. I know that um, DHS is such a a, a big agency and there's so many teams, but um, if there's one team that you can think of when you're talking about public engagement and, and connecting with uh, DHS, uh, please feel free to connect with Kelly and, and Kelly. And one more thing I received from Rochelle the other day is that um, um, there's an open position for the refugee workforce specialist that uh, Patricia was on. So um, they, Patricia did share that uh, with me. And if you need more information, um, I think it was it's expiring today. So today is the last day uh, for the refugee workforce specialists within DHS. So I wanted to highlight that before we left the DHS topic. Um, if you have any questions for the team, uh, please uh, shoot that in the chat or raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll just go ahead. Thank you so much, Kelly and Gali, for joining us. Uh, the next item in our agenda is to um, do more updates, uh, but also we want to talk to you about how you can get involved in the, um, uh, the, 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 the owner bill. Um, we've talked about the bill being part of the omnibus, omnibus bill. Um, there was a hearing, for example, on Friday, and then there was a questions about the um, um, the the um, questions about 
the owner and the ethnic councils. Maybe I'll take a little bit of time uh, to hone in on that so that you can know as you uh, continue to reach out to your leaders, um, you have the opportunity to point out and how the ethnic councils uh, and the Office of New Americans complement each other and how uh, and the community needs both uh, in place to make sure that uh, we get uh, the voices had um, at the legislature. So I'll, I'll, um, if there's no any other question, I'll go ahead and just talk a bit about um, that. So um, <clears throat> we have three amazing ethnic councils um, and in state statute. Um, that have been working tirelessly with our uh, communities and making sure they advocate through the research and be, you know, the point of contact for the communities. Um, what our Office of New Americans is now trying to do is that um, we have, we focus on the scoop. Um, so, for example, the ethnic commission's uh, scoop and duties are tied to, uh, you know, individual ethnicities uh, and nations of origin. Um, and, and, and not the immigration status. Uh, so if you don't identify as an, as an immigrant, for example, and you're not an immigrant, but you are part of that ethnic group, you are served in the ethnic councils. What the Office of New Americans is doing is just talking about the immigration status of any arrival, whether you belong into the ethnic councils, uh, the, the ethnicities uh, served within the ethnic councils or not. For example, um, um, the Middle Eastern communities uh, that, that, that have reached out a couple of times um, that, that form a huge, huge immigrant population within the uh, metro area uh, do, do share that sentiment. And, and of course, the Ukrainian community, for example, um, these are communities that, that have that immigration status that, that honor themselves. So we focus on the school. And, and of course, the duties might be similar, might be different. But that's one major uh, difference that I wanted to highlight for, for, for everyone. And then, of course, um, there's a reason why the Office of New Americans is with indeed. We complement the work of the ethnic councils, um, but we differ in terms of uh, our efforts to focus on, on, on economic and social inclusion. Um, and, and of course, the immigration barriers, uh, the elimination of barriers that we have, uh, language barriers, and et cetera, et cetera. But um, we focus a lot on workforce and economic development. We want to make sure that uh, these communities uh, and arrive in Minnesota or have been there. Uh, they face less barriers in terms of getting jobs and starting uh, entrepreneurship uh, efforts. So um, we're looking into that as well. And that's where we will focus a lot on helping our communities. Um, so that, that I wanted to mention those few, few points, but we will prepare a one pager that we can share with everyone as you continue to um, get involved with the leadership and talk to them about what, um, how you, they can support the, the Office of New Americans Bill. The other thing I wanna mention is, is the funding issue that comes out in a lot of the questions. And so um, there is the, the 1.5 million asked by the House and Senate. And of course, the governor's budget has already been announced and it includes about 750, so half of that uh, for, for, for yearly pays. And so um, I think when, when, when the negotiations start, that uh, as Darielle has advised me a couple of times to not worry, there is going to be some uh, negotiation that's going to happen. And we feel like that budget or that question will be solved when uh, they go into conference committee. So, uh, we don't want you to worry about that as you reach out to your leaders. Uh, just make sure that uh, you you talk to them about the need of of, of the office and how you, we can the community needs that service. Daria, you wanted to mention something? Well, I was just gonna say, and our our big no, that's great. And our big goal here is to make sure we get the office established, right, Assistant Commissioner? Yeah. 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 So I, we're gonna get the office established. Like, I think we're all really united in that. And yes, there's been some differences in funding level, but that I think we all feel like we can work through. No one's funding anything less than the governor re, governor's recommendations. Um, there's just some really excited house members actually, which we love, um, who are proposing higher funding than we'd asked for. And so, uh, you know, we feel like we'll work that out in conference committee. And I don't think we need anyone here to weigh in on the funding levels. At this point, I think we feel pretty like we'll sort that out. 
but um, but we want to make sure that the offense gets established. I think this is year two. No, I know this is year two of us making this push. And um, I think we've all at least a D talked about the idea that we're going to pass this right assistant commissioner. And then we're going to have a party. I think <laughs> right now that we're doing this for a party, but I, two years of work seems to warrant a little celebration time for all the hard work that I know has been put in by so many to get this across the finish line. So that's where I think we're going to head. Thank you. I, okay. I couldn't let this go by without plugging my party interests here for <laughs> first passing it. And then of course, celebrating together because it was very much a group effort. And that's the intention here. I think everyone in the call would agree that um, an office they can identify with and, 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 and continue. Maybe we can cut so, a ribbon. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Thank you. Um, so, Nima, we have the next thing in the agenda is just to continue with the updates, but I will turn it over to you to talk about the testimonies, the one pager, and um, take it from there. Yes. Uh, thank you, AC Abdwab. Um, so, we do have two things. One is, you know, giving testimonies, and that is something that we did last year too. And I really want to Dario in this because I feel like to explain more about the testimonies, we should hear from Dario on exactly how testimonies go. And then we'll talk about the one pager after. But go ahead, Dario. Been summoned. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the things I think about a lot is, um, like I said, we have hundreds of different things we do at our agency, right? And lawmakers, a lot of what they're doing and the decisions they're making sometimes come down to looking at spreadsheets, right? It's like way less exciting than you might think. And I'm often in the room when we are making final decisions. I'm actually, I'm always in the room on behalf of the agency. We're making final decisions and we're looking at spreadsheets. But what really gets things funded, see, I'm getting to the point here, Nima, what really gets things funded is not spreadsheets. What really gets things funded is stories, storytelling. We are, we as humans are storytellers. I fully believe we are born storytellers. Those stories stick in our heads. And so as Nima saying, testimonies, discussions from, from you and folks in community that you work with about why the work of this office is really important, why the establishment of this office is really important. That's the kind of thing that ensures that it actually happens. So the story part, and you can call it testimonies too. So um, last year, we had a lot of folks who did testify on the bill. And we did have, as I talked about before, we had a standalone bill. We had a number of folks who came and testified on those standalone bills. I don't think at this point, because we're in omnibus bills, we're in those big packages, we're kind of beyond the point of folks being able to come down and testify. But being able to reach out and talk to your lawmakers and do a little storytelling yourselves, either um, if you have a reason to be at their office or if you see them in community or sending an email or sending a note um, to them, telling them about, you know, something about your life or people you work with lives and why this is important and why you think that this will make a difference. That's the kind of thing that sticks with people. And so that's what a very sort of long winded story about <laughs> stories. But really, I can tell you, I have seen millions and millions of dollars crossed off of a spreadsheet in the middle of the night because lawmakers don't remember why it's important. There's not a story behind it. It's not sticking in their heads. And this needs to be different than that. I'm gonna pause there and I'm gonna let Nima fill in where I have uh, gone on a bit of a tangent here, but. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She's heard oh. this lecture many times, I believe. <laughs> That's what that look is. No, it's really good to hear it again because it's important, you know, talking about the office and why we need it is the reason that we're all in these meetings. The reason why we're putting all of this together is because we wanna improve more. We wanna get better from where we are today. So in order for that, I have one or two pages. First, it talks about the both chair for the Senate and the House, and it gives all of their information, the chair and the minority leader. And then the other page is the means and ways committee that I have all of their information too, and the finance committee. So I have all of these. And the thing that I wanted Dario to share about the testimonies is how you're gonna be talking to these representatives is telling them the importance of the need for this office and why it's helpful for you. 
And, you know, especially if you go back two years ago when COVID happened, I am so happy that we had this office in place and Anissa here because there was a lot of things that happened. And that was another important thing that came to light of why we need this office. So me and uh, AC at WHAP will be sharing with you uh, a one pager or two pager update by the end of this week uh, to for you to reach out because now everybody's on spring break and they won't be back until next Tuesday. So you guys will have a little bit and in those, um, Two pages I will also include on the top why the reason the goals for the Office of New America in there. So you guys can read off of it, but also share your own stories of why it's important for you to have it. So it sounds like Nima, you've got who to talk to and you've got what to talk about and people can then interject their own story yes. into, yeah. So it sounds like you Nima have made this very straightforward for folks to help folks get to the right people and be impactful to tell their story to help get this across the finish line. Does that sound right? Yes, exactly. Because they don't awesome. hear from us a lot of times. They don't hear from you as a community and your needs. So I think this will be one way to let them know. Awesome. And All if right, you so are reaching out to Senator Muhammad, different Muhammad than AC Muhammad, she was one of the standalone bill authors. So you can also thank her for her. She's been very, very supportive of this. But yeah, for and I and I'll divert for a second and tell a very short story. And we had at one point our AC Muhammad sitting next to Senator Muhammad when they were talking about the standalone bill and sent our AC Muhammad was testifying about the importance of this office. And we do have a little photo of the two, the two Muhammad sitting next to each other trying to get this across the finish line, which I thought was pretty awesome. Yes, thank you. I think that's um, it for us on the one page of contact and we'll definitely follow up with the team and the group um, next by the end of this week. I think we'll have it to you by Thursday. Is that to help? Back to you. Thank you. A um, couple more updates and then I think uh, we might drop up early if we do not have any questions. And after this, I might, I would invite, um, you know, if there are community leaders that want to share um, if there's any um, important events that they wanted to highlight for the group. So I'll give that uh, towards the end uh, of the call. But um, um, the, I needed to touch on a few immigration updates that I, I did receive quite a number of times from the community. Uh, the first one is the program that also was highlighted by Kelly, the welcoming call, the welcome call, right? Uh, the, 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 the Biden administration announced that a private citizens could sponsor uh, someone to to come to the U.S. and and that's been a program that a lot of people called about. Um, Kelly, as she mentioned right now, that the website is now up. Uh, that means uh, you could I will share. She already shared that in the in the group. Um, please feel free to navigate that, and if you have questions, we will connect you with uh, the appropriate people that can answer those questions. What I understand is that the first phase was. Um, you know, the uh, State Department would match you up with uh, um, a family that you can sponsor um, and you pay the fee. And when they get here, you're responsible for the first 90 days, um, welcoming them and taking them through the um, um, process of, you know, housing and keep education and all that. So that, that was the first phase. The second phase is yet to be launched. Uh, which was uh, now uh, sponsoring who you choose to sponsor so long as they are uh, they have a refugee status in, in a country, um, whether they're a country or a country other than theirs. Uh, so that that phase is something that's coming up, but there's going to be a lot of uh, calls and, and webinars scheduled for that. If you need to be part of that information, please send us an email and we can uh, connect you with that. Um, some of you also call about the USA, Canada uh, pact or the talk that they have about the border. Um, now that uh, President Biden has had that conversation with uh, uh, Prime Minister Turnudu, um, that kind of uh, pre-crossing of the border between uh, and Canada and Mexico will be limited. And of course, um, um, immigrants from either side returned to uh, where they, they came from. Of course, there's gonna be more details coming up, but that's, that's some, something that everyone call about. And then, Finally, um, the driver license for all. A lot of you have called about that and asked when it's gonna be ready. Some of you cannot wait. 
uh, what are the regulations, when do we start. Um, there are so many resources that I would uh, refer you to, to, to reach out to, but um, it's safe to say that, you know, October 1st is when it takes effect. And um, we will uh, probably do a webinar or two before then uh, to let anyone who's interested to know uh, the driver license for all and how it works and what are the regulations. But if in the meantime, you have uh, specific questions before it, it launches on October 1st, uh, please reach out to me and we can we can discuss that in details. Uh, there have been so many uh, people who are involved in that bill. I wanna make sure that we recognize them um, as we continue. And I wanna make sure I give them uh, the opportunity to lead those webinars um, uh, as, as we continue closer to the date. So, uh, but if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me and I can give you more information about the um let's see i think that that'll be it for me uh we have about 20 something minutes that i would first open up for questions and answers and then we can um, um i think michelle wanted to share something about an information that we have i will also give her that uh, but i will also welcome anyone else who wants to have any uh, uh <clears throat> information they want to share with the with the group to uh to also raise their hand and then i can i can give you the mic Michelle, Thank you ahead. so much, Commissioner Mohammed. Really appreciate it. This is a great information session and appreciate all the information that's been shared. Um, I'm with the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs for the city of Minneapolis and in partnership with um, Edmundo Leho, my counterpart in St. Paul, who runs the uh, St. Paul Immigrant and Refugee Program. We co host a monthly uh, Twin Cities Immigration Forum, and the next forum will take place next Thursday, April 13th, from 4.30 to 6 p.m. It's a virtual forum. The forum, like this one, is recorded. They've just put the link into the chat where previous forums are accessible, and we'll also put my contact information into the chat in case people may want this um, forum on to regularly appear on their calendars. Happy to answer any questions on or offline. And thank you again for the opportunity to share information about this monthly forum. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, looking at the chat, you shared that link. Um, yep, I see Amundo has got his hand up too. So sorry, I didn't um, pass it over, if that's OK. <laughs> Please, Amundo. Good afternoon, Commissioner Mohammed. Good to see you. Um, and thank you for everything you've been doing. It's, this has been a great meeting. Um, but I also want to add that uh, the cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul are, are also co-hosting uh, a naturalization fair where uh, people can get information about naturalizing and about um, immigration processing and questions. Uh, our next fair is going to be on uh, April 15th from uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Leap High School in St. Paul, um, in the Midway on uh, LaFond Avenue in St. Paul. So all are welcome and we'll uh, send out more information um, on that naturalization fair as well. Thank you for sharing that, um, Mundo. I know you have been leading that effort and this is not the first time um, uh, you posted that. Um, We've reached out to a lot of community members about uh, the, the importance of having naturalization and you know getting the U.S. citizenship. I did actually get two questions last time from two people. One question from two people about you know um, someone does not use a lawyer, they apply for their citizenship, and then um, they get turned away to bring more information, or um, they ask some tricky questions. And so they end up going to look for an attorney after they have already been in the situation. And then you're an attorney yourself. Maybe you can just tell an advice to one or two for such kind of uh, people. But sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, happy to have them come to the fair and, and we'll connect them with some attorneys. Thank you so much. You hear that if you have if you're facing that kind of a question um, or you are in the middle of your uh, um, process to get naturalization, feel free uh, uh, to, to reach out to Edmundo and please do attend that fair. There are so many resources and there are 
attorneys on site that can uh, advise you on a few things. Uh, I, I'll send you the, the, the email contact for those two people who, who call me. Thank you. Great. Any other uh, community organization or a leader that wants to share a program they have um, before we, we, we wrap it up? Hello, Victor. Please go Hi. ahead. Hi, I'm good. And I just want to share. Thank you so much for all the updates. So we are hosting the annual Twin Cities 16 Twin Cities World Refugee Day on June 11th, which is from 12 to 5 at Centennial Park. After two years of COVID um, hybrid, this is our in-person event. Um, and we have five different community organizations who are a part of the planning committee. So this year, our theme is Our Journey, Our Story. We are very excited and we really want to celebrate this after post-COVID as a big celebration and, and keep welcoming refugee immigrant community. So uh, I can send the flyer to everybody in the group, but um, if anybody wants to join or talk about it, you know, just email me, but I'm looking forward to see you all there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ekta. Uh, much appreciated for sharing that. It feels like we're way uh, away from June, but it does not. If all the planning that it goes to, um, I know Ekta is looking for uh, some of the community organizations to uh, to to uh, come out and uh, you know um, get um, a spot for that uh, day. Or if you want to uh, share your business ideas, or you have uh, uh, you know and community event that you want to uh, be part of, this will be the, the prime event for um, our immigrant the refugee communities. It's the one day that that is you know, uh, recognized internationally by the UN. And please feel free to uh, reach out to ECTA for more information. Uh, Lee, please go ahead. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, reach out to ECTA for more information. Uh, Lee, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a quick, I have a question. <clears throat> um, I am wondering if this is Lee with the Department of Education, by the way. Um, so I, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the statute on the, you know, that's proposing the creation of the Office of New Americans. And I noticed that under the interdepartment, departmental coordinating council, um, it mentions all the major state departments, but it's missing the three state ethnic councils. And um, I, I, I'm wondering if that's like, if they're gonna be added at some point, because I feel like they do very similar work to what the statue says this new office will do, um, but they are not listed as one of the required um, representatives that would serve under this council. So just wonder if you know anything about that. Thank you, Lee. That's a very important point to point out. Yes, we did um, include um, the three castles in, into, into, into both bills, the House and Senate. And of course, uh, I'll let Darielle to answer if uh, <laughs> there any more information. But yes, we did. I keep going. I've been summoned. No, go ahead and finish. Yeah, so I, yes, we do have that. I, David already posted um, uh, the, the, the House bill. And yeah. so maybe there are different versions flying around me, and maybe you're looking at the one that did not. There are. That got, was it, got it, got it. I'm probably different. looking at an old version. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's something we've been actively tracking. So it is definitely our intention that the final bill that passes would absolutely include those ethnic councils okay. in, in that space and then actually a little bit of uh, some other spaces as well. So we are making adjustments to the language. It's a great flag. I know the Senate bill has taken um, kind of the most advanced version of the language. And so we're gonna just work this out on conference committee too to get to the right place. But you are you are absolutely correct. And it is our intention to be complementary to the ethnic councils and to absolutely include them in that. Um, I'm always kind of making up the name of it, but advisory council, can I call it an advisory council? Isi Muhammad. Yes, so and maybe that. something <laughs> we can, we can yeah. mention um, closely is that um, yes, we do have an advisory council that will yeah. Um, yeah. will 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 include state agencies and the ethnic councils. Of course, um, they are also part of the state enterprise, and and um, that 
cancel duties is mentioned in the bill. If someone has more, wants more information, you can, but uh, this is a uh, council that will be chaired by the Office of New Americans, uh, um, the Assistant Commissioner, and then we will have um, interdepartmental or interagency work. That's where we will, we will uh, meet um, and discuss how often we want to meet and um, how we can go about it, but more to come on that as well. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you, Assistant Commissioner. I thought I lost my connection. Can you can you hear me, everyone? Thank you. Any other questions, comments, uh, and information to share before we wrap up? I see uh, Sam has a question. Go ahead, Sam. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Samuel Mwangi here with the Global Fatherhood Foundation here in Brooklyn Park. Uh, we are just excited in our job and what we are doing right now. We're so happy. Uh, I just want to make an announcement. Uh, we do have a grant called International Trained Healthcare Professions. Uh, we target anybody over 18 years of age that has been licensed for same or similar work in their country of origin and seek to re-enter the healthcare workforce here in Minnesota, requiring a post-secondary degree, a diploma, or a certificate for licensor, or, or obtain a license to do the similar work in Minnesota. Uh, we almost, uh, I think that this grant is supposed to end in the month of June, but uh, there has been a little bit of an extension. So we still have some little bit of money. If you know anybody who is up there, they have degrees, or any medical uh, license from their country and they wish to continue and they, they really need uh, uh, help, please let me know and reach out to me. I'm going to post my email and information uh, on, the, uh, on the chat. So should there be any questions, you can route them to me and I can follow up with them. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Sam. Um... I, I did um, highlight that program that did had um, uh, came up with, and it's one of the innovative grants that uh, we do get some national uh, coverage for uh, making sure that um, in a way to address the, the healthcare shortage we have, um, did had responded uh, with that with that uh, grant and something that we're proud of. Um, there's another um, conversation that's going on about the IMGs, international medical uh, graduates. Uh, I know Minnesota has a has a good IMG program under the Department of Health. So if there are uh, uh, doctors that are also um, licensed abroad and they are looking at residency, for example, and matching, um, they can you know talk to Sam or they can always reach out to um, uh, the Department of Health to also ask that IMG program. <clears throat> Great. Any other uh, questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, um, looks like we'll, 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 we'll end it early, but I wanted to talk to you about the next, um, uh, the next uh, the training that the next uh, Immigrant and Refugee Affairs Forum that we have. You all have received that um, a recurring calendar invite for until the end of the year um, for every first Tuesday of the month. Um, someone already pointed out that the, the first Tuesday on, on July is, is falling on, on the 4th of July, and I don't think anyone wants to work on that day. And so we will, I will we'll move around some of the days if need be, but that was a placeholder uh, calendar invite that I sent out for the first Tuesday of every month uh, until the end of the year, and then we can always send more. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I'm looking to host an in-person event to bring all us to, all of us together for the first time, and, and I am still uh, in the in the discussion whether we will do it within our immigrant refugee affairs forum. Um, that means on the first Tuesday of a month, or do a separate event uh, to accommodate those who might not uh, be able to join us uh, from Greater Minnesota. Um, so we, we have that discussion, but more to come on that, uh, and I would love for us all to get together and have an in-person event 
sometime um, in May or June. Uh, that is something I will reach out separately and, um, and look forward to um, sharing that information with you. And the other thing I wanted to point out was a job fair that we have done in November that was really uh, successful. And we had great success stories of people who have been placed into jobs. And, and we have a plan to host uh, the same with uh, Minneapolis, the city of Minneapolis, um, and maybe at the, at the, the Brian Cole Center um, towards the end of um, April. Uh, more information to come on that as well. Um, and, and I will be happy to share that in an email. Um, those are in the bits that I had from me. Uh, please feel free to reach out in email. I'll read my email there. And if there's no any other, other questions, I'll turn it over to you, Nima, to close us out. All right. I think. Well, thank you too. Uh, I think this was a great meeting and we'll definitely continue more of these meetings. And I just appreciate, really appreciate our D, uh, policy and team being here today and giving us more updates on, and we'll do more updates. I think coming up, we'll give you, we'll do, I think every meeting, like at least two to five minutes until the session ends on how the progress and how everything is going. We'll give you updates. So I will definitely connect with uh, Dario and Devin to continue doing these updates with you guys. And I really wanna appreciate AC to have on the work he's doing. And I seen that our deputy commissioner, Mark was here um, for a while today. So I really wanna appreciate him being part of this uh, meeting and this group too. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, it was a wonderful seeing you again and looking forward to the next month's hearing, I mean meeting. So thank you so much. And you guys have 12 minutes back of your time today. Thank yeah, you so much. Have a nice one day. more thing, um, I would share an update on behalf of Mark, uh, who was here today. If you want to work uh, closely with Mark and myself uh, in the leadership, we have two uh, open positions that would not open, but that we are hoping to um, uh, open soon. Uh, the first one is um, our ETP uh, director, employment and training director. Uh, that's a leadership position within the that's critical. Um, of course, both positions are, are really critical to helping uh, Minnesota um, reduce the workforce shortage that we have. Uh, so that the, the other position is um, um, Lori's position, the career force uh, um, manager position, director position. So those uh, two leadership positions that that will um, let one work closely with Mark and myself, and we will let you know once we post those questions. But feel free to reach out to us and, and follow up. Now, thank you much again. Really appreciate it for joining us. And until next time on May 2nd, see you then. Thank you.